So continuing with invest.c, the next section of our program is where we define prototypes for our helper functions. So we've decided not to write invest.c as one long single function, but to break it up into smaller functions so that we respect modularity. In particular, in this program, we've got three helper functions. One is called get user input. The second one is called calculate growth. And the third one is called send output. So get user input here is of type integer. That means that this helper function is return a type, return an integer. And it takes one argument, this star invp. So invp we know now is a pointer to something of type investment. Investment is the data type that we've defined just earlier in the program. So we're gonna take a pointer to type investment and we're gonna return an integer from this function. The next function, calculate growth, doesn't return anything. Neither does send output return anything. Calculate growth also takes a pointer to type investment. And send output takes a pointer to type double. So ARR is a pointer to type double. And it also takes an integer years. Okay? This one's not a pointer. This is a pointer to type double. And this actually is used to pass an array. Instead of passing an entire array of values, what we do is we pass a pointer to the first element of the array. And then we know from there that the other elements in the array are the next memory addresses up from there. Okay? So we pass the value years and a pointer to the beginning of the array. Okay. So now we can go down to the main function. And the main function now is allowed to use these functions because it's already seen prototypes for them, even though it doesn't know what they do yet. That gets compiled separately. So the main function defines a single variable, local variable, because this variable is defined inside the braces. It's local only to this function. And that variable is, is called inv, and it's of type investment that we defined earlier. The first thing it does is perform this while loop. And what the while loop does is it tests what's inside these parentheses here, tests whether it's true or not. If what's inside the parentheses is true, then it executes to the bottom of the loop. And then when it hits the bottom here at this closed brace, closing this open brace down here, then it's gonna come back to the top. It's gonna check what's inside these parentheses again, see if it's true. And if so, we'll execute. And if it's false, it will fall out of this loop. It will come here, return zero, and finish. Okay. So it's asking get user input. And get user input is going to return true or false. True means, yes, the user input is valid. False means, no, it's not valid. And then it will drop out of the loop. In addition, we're telling get user input, we're going to send the get user input a pointer to this variable, this structure in, we're gonna send a pointer and what's gonna happen is get user input is gonna fill the information in that, uh, in that structure. Okay. So this is doing two things. It's testing whether the input is valid and it's also filling the user input into that structure in. In this next line here, we're going to set the first element of the array Remember that this data type has an array of values over the years. We're going to set the first value of that equal to the initial investment that the user entered. This dot here means that we're accessing the element of the structure. So inv is the name of the variable, and it's a structure. And we want to access the inv0 element of that structure. The next thing we do is we call calculate growth. We send again over the pointer to the type or to the variable inv. And what that does, calculate growth does is it fills the uh, fills inv with the new values of the growth in the investment over the years. And then the last thing we do is we print out the output. And for, the, for that, we send over the array itself, actually a pointer to the array as well as the number of years that the growth was being tracked. 